Right now, it is time once again, we try to get a monthly legislative update from our representative in Hartford, which is Maria Horn, and we welcome her this morning on The Breakfast Club. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Marshall. It's nice to be with you on a chilly spring in Connecticut day. <laughs> Who ever thought we'd have uh, snow close to Mother's Day? <laughs> That's right. But anyway. Here we go. <laughs> so now, it's, it's you know, I you look at the, at the, uh, at the stories that come out of Hartford, uh, uh, tolls, uh, marijuana, uh, uh, sports betting. Uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of different ways uh, that the state can uh, can raise income. Um, but there's also a lot of people, for some reason, uh, that don't understand that uh, we're in uh, some pretty deep problems here and uh, we have to raise income and we do have to uh, cut uh, our expenses as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is, as you just suggest, this is a yes and situation. Um, keeping in mind that, you know, we have cut, uh, you know, over the last six to eight years, something like 10,000 workers off the state payroll. And and sometimes that's a good decision. And sometimes we see the effects of that in appropriations in terms of overtime costs popping up or, or services not being delivered to the degree that we find acceptable. So we got to deal with that, too, and understand that sometimes short-term cuts um, yield to longer term, you know, cost escalations. So that's a tricky thing. But um, you know, nobody and you know, here that nobody wants to hand over more money to Hartford, particularly you know the record given the record uh, over the last decades. But we have to be. I sort of feel like I was elected to be fiscally responsible, and to and and I applaud the governor in particular for putting forward a budget that is straightforward. And and balanced, and now we it's our t- you know turn to respond in kind and to look at both sides of the balance sheet. One of the challenging things about Connecticut, as many other state legislatures, is we you know we don't have a like in Congress we don't have a Ways and Means Committee. We have a an Appropriations Committee which deals with expenditures, and we have a Finance Committee which deals with the revenue side. And so those are two separate. I often have funny conversations with other other legislators who are on finance who look to appropriations for you know to solve the problem, and people on appropriations look to people on finance to solve the problem, and so we have to maintain a dialogue between the two and and try to get to something that is that is straightforward, that can invest in things like you know Connecticut's infrastructure, which desperately needs help, and that can help move our economy you know forward. You know, infrastructure is so important. I I always say to people, I'm a I I I'm a, a blatant big supporter of tolls. I am a supporter of marijuana sales simply because they're going to be so close. Uh, we should keep some of that money home. Uh, and I am a big believer uh, in sports betting uh, away from the casinos, by the way, because we already have Keno and stuff like that uh, to raise funds. Now, you know. When it comes to tolls, it's so tricky, Maria. I, I just always, you know, people don't complain when they go on vacation and they pay tolls. Uh, mm-hmm. They go over bridges, they pay tolls. Uh, you know, the Connecticut roads are used by Connecticut residents, yes. But you talk about uh, we are a th- we are basically a throughway link uh, to get to the rest of New England. And uh, there's probably 50 or 60% of the people that travel our roads that aren't even from the state. Yeah, absolutely. And And I look at this as a sort of you know, a a multi-step process. The first step is there is near universal agreement that we have to have, we need significant investment in our roads, both for public safety and for our economy. I mean, there are tons of studies indicating the huge economic costs of gridlock, um, not to mention costs to repairs to your car because you have to drive over over some really lousy roads. Uh, So everybody agrees we have to do that. So then the next question is, how do you do that? And, and, you know, sometimes people who are you know, either advocating or opposed to just tee up, you know, one solution on its own. Do you want to hand over, you know, more money to Hartford? Well, no. But if the question is, we have to invest in this, how are you going to do What's the most responsible way to do it? And to me, the two proposals to, to date are borrow the money and make our kids pay 100% of the cost or share the cost with our neighbors. And the studies indicate that, that our out-of-state drivers would pay about 40% of the tolls in the state. And Somebody put it the other day, we're effectively right now running an out-of-state charity for, you know, out-of-state trucking services because they get a free ride riding through Connecticut, and they pay in every other neighboring state. And, and you know, I, I understand people have the reluctance to, to want to hand more money over, but it's a question of how we make, what's the most responsible way to make a needed and necessary investment? And to me, tolls are are the most plausible solution. I do I note that the governor has proposed a sort of 
combination um, uh, plan recently, which allows for some borrowing to allow infrastructure repairs to get started right away. Um, and then puts tolls into place over time. And, and I, I'm interested in that, if that can draw some, some bipartisan support and maybe take the edge off of this debate. But um, so far, tolls seem like the most responsible option for us. Yeah, I just don't, I, I just don't see the, the difference uh, if, you buy, if you buy cigarettes. You pay a heavy tax on cigarettes for right. many reasons. If you buy alcohol, whatever you do, it's, and if you decide to drive on, a, on a, a beautiful state highway that you want maintained, it's got you got to pay for it, and you have to be part of that. Somebody asked me, would you be willing to pay a toll if there was a toll put on uh, Route 41 between where I live and here? And I said, do, yeah, they maintain it, so it's a perfect road, and it's got nice coverage in the wintertime and everything. Absolutely, I'll pay tolls for it. it. Yeah. yeah, and and the studies that they've done in terms of indicating what the actual tolls would be, I do think take some of the sting out of this because mm-hmm. they're actually not as onerous as some people would suggest. All right, so, uh, so now how's... Yeah, you know, how is the governor handling this? I mean, there are some things that I that that kind of shocked me that he that he brings up, but uh, I really happen to think he's he's being a much stronger leader and a stand up uh, guy than I expected to uh, in that position. I think what's happening is, I mean, early on he got you know lots of plaudits for being open to conversation, and and it truly well every time you talk to the governor, he, you know he is truly listening to you and and looking for new ideas. And I think that was refreshing, particularly in in uh, contrast to to Governor Malloy, who had a very different interpersonal style. Um, and he also Governor Lamont, you know, brings an outside experience. He's not an inside uh, government guy. Um, that was very much appreciated. And then, but then when we passed to the next phase, I think people were looking for a little bit more direction, and it was unclear. You know, he was changing his mind about a few things. He was so open that the perception was, okay, well, well, okay, you've listened to everybody. Now, where are we going? And I think we're starting to see that now where he's, you know, digging in and saying, no, this is the, this is the policy. And, and, ad- and we're feeling that in the legislature because he did spend a long time listening to all of us. And now he and his commissioners are coming back and saying, this is what we want. And they're, you know, whipping votes and talking to people and trying to get their, their policies through. So, you know, it's a balance as always. All right, just to wrap up here, what do you think the next couple of things, the most important things that you'll be working on back in Hartford? Well, I mean, you know, we have one of the things that I hope that we will get through the legislator this week, Everett, we have a we have a deal after many, many years uh, to provide PTSD as part of workers' compensation. This grows out of, out of Sandy Hook when um, it was clear that a lot of not just first responders, but a lot of volunteers and others who dealt with that, that horribly tragic and brutal violent situation, you know, all those dead children, um, that our system was not adequate to deal with the trauma that the people who, who dealt with that situation had. And so we've been working for years to come up with a compromise solution to that. And, and we have, you know, the, the various parties involved finally had a breakthrough after many, many years. And, and we, I would hope that we get, we just passed it out of appropriations yesterday, um, and I hope that we get to see it on the floor of the House soon. Um, there are some other big ticket items. Uh, you know, you're, I'm never sure which ones are going to come up in which order. Um, uh, tolls, of course. Uh, you know, marijuana. Uh, um, that there's a lot of conversation about that. And and to be clear on that, I, I've had some people write to me and say, "Don't just take the party line." I have to say that not once in my experience has somebody come to me and said, "You got to vote this way. You got to vote with your party." Instead, I get people coming to me and saying, "How are you on this issue? How do you feel about it? Where are your concerns? Let's work through them." And and the major pieces of legislation that we've moved through have all had compromises in them, and I'm I'm pretty proud of that. Oh, well, Maria, keep up uh, the good work. Uh, we're going to try to check with you on a month by month basis. And how many miles have you put on your car now? <laughs> <laughs> Stop counting. This this morning, I packed up my car for the next three days, given that I, I barely made it out of Hartford at all last week. So, all right. Well, <laughs> I'm living uh, in my car. All right, have a safe trip this morning, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Marshall. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Maria Horn, our state representative, uh, joining us uh, on, a, on, a, on a monthly basis here on Robin Hood Radio. Uh, you can hear this interview in full at RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand, click on Interviews, and you'll see Interview with Maria Horn.